Okay, we're given a function, g of x, and what we know about it is its Maclaurin series representation. We have to determine its interval of convergence, and then we're going to make some estimates about uh, the error bound, and then we're going to deal with the derivative of the function. So, in my mind, the real useful information is simply remembering the fundamental uh, Taylor polynomial expansion. And so, uh, let's start with A, which asks us to first uh, determine the interval of convergence. So, we begin by using the ratio test. So we use the ratio test to establish the interval except for the endpoints, which we have to deal with separately. <clears throat> All right, the ratio test involves writing down the n plus 1 term, comparing it, dividing it by the nth term and then taking the limit as n goes to infinity. So we need the limit as n goes to infinity. Now I'll first write down the n plus 1 term. That's going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1. x, now let's be a little careful here. We need to substitute n plus 1 here for n. That's going to increase the amount of this exponent by 2. So it's going to become 2n plus 3. x to the 2n plus 3. Now what happens here in the denominator? Again, if we increase n by 1, since we're multiplying 2 by that n, that's going to increase it by 2. So this becomes 2n plus 5. Now we're going to divide by the nth term, this term. But instead of dividing by this, we uh, save a step by simply multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to write that. That's going to be, um, sorry, that'll be 2n plus 3 over x to the 2n plus 1. And then we also have this negative 1 to the n term. Now, in fact, the ratio test we're going to apply to the absolute value of this. So first of all, we don't really care about the effect of these negative 1 to the n's. <clears throat> Whatever they, uh, effect they have is going to become irrelevant when we take the absolute value. What we're really interested in is this x to the 2n plus 3 over the x to the 2n plus 1. And that's going to come out. So I'm going to rewrite this. The limit as n goes towards infinity, absolute value of x to the 2n plus 3 over x to the 2n plus 1. x to the 2n plus 1. Now, what we're going to get as a result is just, oops, is just going to be x squared. Okay, so this is just x squared. Now what about what's left, namely 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 5? Well again, since we're taking the limit as n tends to infinity, <coughs> the 3 and the 5 here really become irrelevant. And we're really just comparing 2n to 2n. So this is simply 1. So what we have is that x squared is the ratio between successive terms of this series in the limit that n goes to infinity. And so it's simply that x squared has to be kept less than 1. Well, that implies, of course, that x is between negative 1 and 1. Okay. Now we have to test the endpoints separately.
Let's start with x equals negative 1. Again, I substitute negative 1 in for x back into the formula and see what sort of series I have. I have this infinite series, n equals 0 to infinity, of negative 1 to the n, 1, or negative 1 to the 2n plus 1. And that's divided by 2n plus 3. <clears throat> well, when you combine all of this negative 1 power, you're going to get negative 1 to the 3n plus 1, which means the values will alternate. Okay, so this is an alternating series. And let's see what would happen. What would we get for our very first uh, term choice? Yeah, we're going to get... Um, negative a third plus one-fifth minus a seventh, etc. And so because this is an alternating series, all we have to do is ensure that the nth term in the limit that n is going to infinity goes to zero. An alternating series whose um, uh, nth term magnitude uh, is decreasing to zero in the limit that n goes to infinity. That's enough to prove convergence. Uh, now we test the endpoint x equals 1. Again, we're going to get uh, on almost identical series. The only thing that's going to change is the minus sign. Okay. So let's see, we tested this x equals negative 1 case. Here's the x equals 1 case. Again, we get an inner... Uh, an infinite series n equals 0 to infinity. In this case, we're just going to have negative 1 to the n, and then just 1 to the 2n plus 1, which is just 1, so I'm not even going to write it down, 2n plus 3. So it's essentially the same series that we had before, but just the negative of it. So, dot, dot, dot. I guess I should have said dot, dot, dot. And by the same arguments as above, again, that it's an alternating series whose uh, term's magnitude is decreasing to zero in the limit that n goes to infinity, so we have that it converges. Okay? So, putting all of that together, we have an interval of convergence of that includes both endpoints. And that is part A. Let's continue this in part B. Now in part B, they've just told us that <clears throat> When you plug in x equals a half, you also get an alternating series whose terms decrease in absolute value. And they tell us what the approximation is. G one half, they say, is approximately 17 over 120 when using first two it is equal to 17 over 120 when using um, the first two non-zero terms. Okay, now they want us to show that the error of this approximation uh, differs from the true value by less 
than 1 in 200. And what we're going to say is because this is an alternating series, we can simply use the next term. as a bound on the error. The next term is the uh, term that we saw up above. We're, we're just using the x over 3 minus x cubed over 5 term. So it's the x to the fifth over 7 term. Okay. So we're just going to say that the error is its absolute value is less than or equal to one half to the fifth over seven, which equals um, one over two hundred and twenty four and one over two hundred and twenty four is certainly less than one over two hundred. So that's the proof. Last thing is just to write the first non the first three non-zero terms and the general term of the Maclaurin series for G prime. So G prime, I can simply take uh, the term by term derivative to find G prime. Take derivatives. Term by term. Okay. And so I'll just take the function that they've given us x over 3 minus x cubed over 5 plus x5 to this x to the 5 over 7. And I'll just write um, d by dx of x over 3 minus x cubed over 5 plus x5 over 7. And that's going to be 1 third uh, minus 3x squared over 5 plus 5x4 over 7. Okay, those are the first three terms. What about the general term? Well, the general term is just d by dx of, and we write the general term, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 3. Well, that's just negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 3. Those terms come out front. They're just constants with respect to x. The only thing that we do is we use the power. We pull down the 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n. That's it.